the structure of DNA. And one of the things I'm going to keep hammering home is that DNA structure is the same in all organisms. So it doesn't matter if it's you or a fish or a plant or whatever. DNA is DNA. It's universal. So here's a bioluminescent jellyfish, right? It glows, which is pretty cool. Here's a mouse that glows. And what some scientists did, just kind of wacky to think about, and we've talked about this a little bit in class if, if you've been around, is that we take the DNA for the gene that makes the glowing protein, the protein that glows. So DNA codes for proteins, big idea. DNA codes for proteins. And we take that gene and we insert it into mouse embryos and we can make them glow, which is kind of cool. I guess if you like glowing mice and things like that. So let's push that a little bit farther. So here's chromosome number 10 from a uh, human being, from you and me, chromosome number 10. And right there in that yellow arrow, is a gene for a protein called PAX. And PAX is a protein that controls the formation of eyes. And again, it's universal. It doesn't matter if it's us or mice or flies. The protein that's produced controls the development of eyes. So if the, if the gene's okay, then we get a normal eye development in humans, mice, and in fruit flies. If it's not okay, then it's messed up in humans, mice, and in fruit flies as well, because DNA is universal. So DNA controls the production of proteins. So if we know the DNA, we know what proteins are being made, or vice versa. If we know the protein, we can figure out the DNA, and we'll get to that. So DNA is composed of four nucleotides, and those nucleotides are the things that make up uh, the long chain of DNA, that polymer of DNA. And each nucleotide has three parts, right? It has a phosphate group that connects the sugars on the outside. It has a deoxyribose sugar, so this is DNA, deoxyribose nucleic acid. And it has a nitrogen-containing base. So here's a typical, here's a, here's a schematic of a uh, nucleotide. So three parts. It has the phosphate, that's the little circle thing. It has that pentagonal, the five carbon sugar, that's the deoxyribose. And in this case, it's got a double ring nitrogen carrying base. So we'll get to a picture, a little more closer, closer look at that in those nitrogen carrying bases in a second. But it's composed of three different parts, all right? So here are the nitrogen carrying bases. We've got thymine, cytosine, adenine, and guanine. So take a look closely at those and you'll see the difference between them is that some have a single ring and some have a double ring. So thymine and cytosine are a class of nitrogen carrying bases called pyrimidines and they have a single ring. And adenine and guanine have a double ring. And if you look into the ring you can see the nitrogen that's there. So well, that's why we call them nitrogen containing or nitrogen carrying bases. And if you recall there are some rules, and we've been playing with models for a while, but nucleotides always pair the same. Remember, A pairs with T and G pairs with C. So you always have to have a single ring molecule and a double ring molecule across the rungs of DNA. And if you have A pairing with T and G pairing with C, that keeps a uniform distance across the molecule. So A pairing with T and G pairing with C, it keeps a uniform distance all the way across the uh, the molecule, across DNA. Okay, so let's talk about some bonding here. And what this is important as far as the stability of DNA. So on the, the backbone, the backbone is connected by covalent bonds. So the sugars and the phosphates repeating over and over again down the sides of the molecule. Sugars and phosphates are held together by covalent bonds. And those are pretty strong. So covalent bonds hold together the sugars and phosphates. They also hold the sugars to the nitrogen carrying bases. But then in the middle, the bases, the A's and the T's and G's and C's are connected by hydrogen bonds. Now, if you remember from water, hydrogen bonds are pretty tentative. They're strong collectively, but individually they're weak. And so when we talk about replication, um, in other words, making copies of DNA, those hydrogen bonds are going to be important as far as unzipping the molecule. Ooh, a little foreshadowing, a little preview of things to come. So, 
those are kind of the big ideas about DNA. DNA is composed of nucleotides. Nucleotides have three parts. Uh, nitrogen carrying base, which could be A, T, G, or C, a phosphate, and a sugar molecule. So DNA structure. Hope that helps.